We all know what a focus pull is. Here is one for you. And this is done manually, so it's almost spot on, but good enough. One of the cool things you can do with a camera with variable ND, as in this one I'm using here, which is the PXW FX9 from Sony, is a depth of field pull. So right now we're super shallow. I'm going to increase my depth of field so you can see a little bub. It's a pretty easy thing to do. You simply put your variable ND into auto mode. You do need to have a lens with a smooth iris, absolutely. So when you start wide open and then you close down your iris, then your depth field will increase and you'll see the background much more. But of course it gets much, much darker. So the idea is that the variable ND will compensate for that. There's a few bits of fiddling with settings. So when you're wide open, you should have the maximum amount of variable ND in. And then when you close down, it will go to its minimum amount of ND. The lens that I'm using has a seven stop range, 1.4 to 16. The variable ND of the camera is a five stop control. It does have seven stops in total, but when you get down to the least amount, that is two stops. And then if you want to have more lights, you have to turn off the variable ND. So there's no control over those first two stops. So basically you have a window of five stops. If you do try and close down your iris, you'll see that as I go past that five stops, I end up two stops underexposed. So you'll need to limit yourself to those five stops. There is a way around that, and that means having something else auto on there, which basically is gonna be the ISO. Getting your settings right for this is a bit fiddly, but after a bit of experimenting, you can make it work. So I basically set my auto ISO max to be two stops higher than what I had it set for the non-auto ISO, if that makes sense. But what if you don't have a camera with a variable ND? Because most cameras don't. One day they all will, just not yet. Actually, you can achieve this effect with pretty much any camera out there. You just need to have a camera with a decent high ISO performance and a lens with a smooth aperture because you're going to be using auto ISO. This is an SLR Magic 35mm 1.2 it's full frame E mount. I love this lens. And this is the Sony a6600 APS E camera. So, what we need to do is go into our auto ISO settings. Open up to the widest point you want to be for the shallowest amount and use your lowest ISO on that point. Hopefully it should be nice. If you are outdoors, you may need to put on some ND on the lens, but don't touch it for anything other than cutting the amount of light coming in. I'm indoors, so I don't need that. And then close down your lens and see how high the ISO needs to go for you to get exposure. And it is definitely too noisy and too high on this camera to go the full way. A five stop pull is about right. And to be honest, it's more than enough for most things. And it definitely works. There are downside, of course, because as soon as you start closing down the aperture, you are just adding noise. But if your camera's pretty good with higher ISOs, you should be fine. Some cameras do have a slight color shift when you push up your ISO, so just be aware of that. My biggest issue I had was making sure that that auto ISO was in sync with my aperture change. Most of the time it wasn't. There's not really any options in the camera I can do to tweak that, apart from maybe change the way that it meters. With the FX9, I do have the ability to change the reaction speed. With a bit of patience, you'll get there, and maybe you'll figure out how to get it to be perfect each time. You may be asking, this is all very cool, but what's the point of it? Well, think about it. The way that we draw attention to something in the frame normally is to have a shallow depth of field. By starting off with a deeper depth of field and making it shallower as part of the shot, we are drawing the viewer's attention to that person in the frame. And alternatively, we could be doing it as a reveal, so showing more of the background. A focus pull is about changing the attention from one thing to another. But with a depth of field pull, we're still on that same subject, and that can have a very powerful impact on your shot. If I haven't convinced you yet, this will. 
The Unique system uses a motor on the iris to change depth of field, and our variable ND filter automatically keeps exposure constant, enabling a novel form of cinematic expression. And five years from retirement. It isn't personal, Mike. Your salary benefit package is too much against your return. You work hard, you play by the rules, you're a good soldier and you don't deserve it. But the reality is sometimes soldiers end up casualties. Ha! Go ahead and give it a try. As long as you have that smooth iris and a fairly decent ISO performance on your camera, there's nothing stopping you apart from your own creativity. So I need to rest my voice now because I am not in a good way. And hopefully it will get better soon so I can finish DVO for my FX9 review. Here's a win-win situation for you. Would you like a Rode Video Mic NTG, an Atomus Ninja 5, a $100 BNH card, a two terabyte SSD from Glyph? To be in with a chance of winning one of these, all you need to do is to watch a free episode of my filmmaking for photographers masterclass. Yes, you get a free episode, which is worth $79 anyway, and then you just need to answer a question at the end and it's also one of the best episodes it's the one all about movement so it's free to enter you get a free episode and chances of winning loads of prizes which will be of course free because they're prizes so what the hell are you doing why are you not watching that right now get on it